Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I um, uh, we're going to talk today about uh, an, a, a, an introduction and in half an hour introduction to compartmental models or macro models. Um, you know, I used that avatar some time ago, and I decided to keep it. So I'm David Mendez from Health Management and Policy. We are going to talk about today about aggregate models, also you know, uh, called mac macro simulation models. And uh, I, I'm going to um, use a, an example of uh, using a compartmental model to forecast uh, or to project future smoking rates. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, a, concept, a conceptualization of the model. Suppose that we have um, a, a world in, in which we, we have three types of people depending on uh, their a smoking status. There are never smokers, current smokers, and former smokers, and they are, uh, you know, distributed among the population. Now, I want to keep track of them and and know the the um, sometimes the, the law of motion, the dynamics of the transitions of uh, uh, these individuals to other classifications over time. So, what I would do first is because it's so complicated just keep track you know of every one of them also we could but you know we are interested in more of a, a global view of the situation so the first thing i'm going to do is group them in the population so i have the group of the for the uh, neighbor uh, current and former smokers and then i'm going to put boxes around them and those boxes is what we call compartments. And the compartments, I'm not going to keep track inside of those compartments. I'm not going to keep track of individual people, but group of people. Therefore, um, I am going to, uh, you know, follow some statistics and the, uh, of of the of the group, like uh, how many how many individuals are in in each one of those compartments. So we have 24 never smokers, 10 current smokers, and four former smokers. So now uh, let's, let's assume that I'm interested not just in the smoking status, but on age of those individuals. So I, I want to make sure that I understand who are the people uh, from uh, ages uh, 0 to 17, 18 to 24, and more than 24 years old. But I also want to distinguish by never smokers, current smokers, and former smokers. So what I do is I just group uh, the neighbor, current, and former smokers by age. So I have another set of, uh, of, of big uh, you know, compartments. But at the same time, I keep uh, the, um, the you know, I, I keep the, the classification of smoking status. But now I also separate them by age group. Okay, so uh, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven compartments, right? In which I uh, you just count how many people are in there. So um, now uh, you know I keep statistics uh, about what how, the number of people in in each group, and uh, um, as, so sometimes, like let's say that I am interested in further. Uh, classification of individuals and not just uh, greater than uh, uh, um, 24, but oh, I want to separate the greater to the adults in um, or uh, the uh, older adults in uh, less than 50 and, and uh, uh, greater than 50 years old. So I get more compartments, right? So depending on what I want to track, I create those the more disaggregated uh, boxes in which I keep track the number of people in, in, in there. So now this is, this is my compartmental model. This is uh, what we call the state of the system at a given time. So that, this is a, a snapshot of the, the, the system, uh, you know, classified by age and classified by uh, former um, uh, never former and current smokers, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, as, as you say, uh, as I said, a, a snapshot of the present time. And what I want to do 
is uh, create a snapshot of the, the future time. So um, I, I got uh, the what was happening in time t, but I want to anticipate what's going to happen in time t plus one. So that's you know what my model is uh, is going to do. So the besides keeping track, besides knowing how many people are in the compartments at a given time, uh, I need to create the loss of di the dynamic loss, the loss of motion over time that uh, uh, explain how people transition from one box to another box over time. And um, it's a very, very um, you know, simple um, idea that the, the state at, the, uh, at time t plus one is the, the state as at t, so the number, the classification uh, of smokers at t uh, plus change. And the change is the, what defines the dynamic, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the dynamic of, of the model, the, um, the uh, structure of the model. So we have, of course, um, the future is the present uh, plus change. So how do we measure, uh, measure change? Well, we need to do some accounting. So right now we have a smoker at time t, and I want to figure out at time t plus one, how many people come in at, the, at, at the, a specific um, compartment box and how many people get out, for, ex for example. Um, you know, I lose uh, five people here to cessation and uh, four people here due to death. And, uh, but I get, you know, two more people because of relapses. Uh, so the former smokers that started to smoke again. And then I got 10 people to in, uh, who initiated smokers. So when I have the smokers at time T, and then I do the accounting of the inflow minus the outflow, right? Then I have the future. That's the, the, the smokers at uh, T plus one is 13 by doing all this, uh, uh, you know, just arithmetic, right? So this, this, is, this is what we have. Um, so um, these, these models that, uh, you know, take care of transitions and they take and, and, and keep track of this number of people or number of uh, items in a certain classification, um, they, they are you know, known um, uh, by different names, the stock and flows um, uh, models, uh, compartmental models, however. Uh, compartmental models is a very generic uh, the definition in which uh, uh, what what you have again is you you identify the boxes that you need to keep track of, and then you figure out how many there's an initial state. Mean uh, these are many people, or these are many um, items in each compartment, and then you define how people get in, or how items get in, and how items get out. Uh, so um, the number of people in the um, in the boxes are uh, what we call the stock and the, um, you know, the number of people that come in. At, uh, uh, so it can be a per unit of time. Uh, so from one time to the next, or if we're talking about continuous time, uh, it's the rate. Uh, so these uh, inflows and flows and outflows are uh, are, are, called, are called the flows, right? So we have a stock and flow. So this is stock, the number, um, you know, what, what we're looking at, and then the flows is the, uh, the ins and outs of those uh, compartments. So, um, you know, the, most of the time, uh, or the, the, project, the uh, models that we have uh, work on in uh, tobacco control, most of them are uh, linear uh, models, so they they follow uh, some sort of a Markov process, right? So if you know the state of the system at one point, so you know how many people, how many individuals are in any given um, uh, you know box at 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 any given time, and you know the motions, you know the law of motions, the law of transition 
then that's all you need. You don't need to know anything about the past of the system because the state captures all the information that you need to, to know about the system. And then you can progress the system from, from there, give, you know, given if you know this, um, um, you know, the, the, the way that individuals come in and out of the, uh, of the boxes. So, um, you know, for example, uh, we use, you know, parameters uh, in order to um, uh, regulate the flow from one, um, you know, one, one box to the next. This is uh, the initiation rate, for example, that is applied to the never smokers to uh, figure out how many new smokers we have. And that initiation rate can be a, you know, a constant or it can be changing with time. You know, when we, with, when these parameters change with, with time, uh, um, we, we call this time varying system, right? So there's still a linear system, but it's time varying. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, it's not, you know, an, a, a very, um, uh, a, a very uh, uh, straightforward process. Sometimes, for example, the stock uh, in one box uh, is, is, uh, uh, determine or it helps uh, to modify the flow to that uh, compartment somehow. And then we have what we call the feed, feedback loops. And, uh, um, and, and but if we have the, these transition rules, uh, then we can accommodate that. So uh, the easiest ones to look uh, and, and to analyze our, our system in which these uh, transitions uh, are the, the rates uh, are um, the constant and they are just proportional to the number of, of uh, uh, the individuals in the stock, uh, you know, for, from which they come. But we, we can have, you know, any kind of functional uh, form for uh, the, the varying of these uh, uh, transitions. Also, uh, uh, we can, you know, get feedback loops to the, to the state, uh, uh, and uh, you know that's uh, you know uh, another uh, you know way in which uh, we can incorporate the dynamics in in the model. So um, uh, I'm going to talk, uh, you know, make some reference, a quick reference about a basic uh, compartmental model that uh, track uh, the smokers and uh, former smokers and never smokers and uh, that uh, you know we uh, a colleague of mine and i developed a long time ago and it's just like a toy model uh, but you know keep track of the uh, at that time it was like a toy a toy model but keep track of uh, quite accurately of the path of uh, smokers and former smokers and never smokers and the population. So, um, so we have, for example, here the adult current smokers. That so, so that the number of adult current smokers, but separated by inside age group. So we don't have only uh, there are you know um, forty four million uh, uh, current smokers. We have how many current smokers of age uh, 18, 19, 20, up to uh, 110. And then, uh, and then we have transitions from one to uh, one box to another uh, based on the, um, you know, rates and age and, uh, and, and uh, mortality rates and so on. Okay, so um, these here, uh, this part are the, um, initiation and cessation rates, and the initiation and cessation rates can be influenced by policy. So, um, you know, we, we can have modules that say, well, uh, we raised up uh, prices, right? We raised uh, taxes and prices went up, and, and we know the, uh, the influence in cessation and initiation rates uh, because uh, uh, prices go up, uh, you know, we, we have major elasticity price elasticity of, of um, uh, you know, demand for, for these products. And uh, uh, then we can, depending on the um, magnitude of a tax, then we can 
you know, figure out how the initiation and cessation rates are going to move, and therefore uh, these flows are going to be altered. And then we can compare uh, the, you know, the the progress of this talk over time uh, if we do nothing versus if we put some policies. Um, you know, we model, we need to be as specific as we can. Uh, and uh, we, um, uh, in, in, in this model, we incorporated some specific death rate by age, gender, smoking status. And uh, for example, um, I'm not gonna dwell a lot of, uh, in this. So this is, this, this graph are a relative risk for former and, um, and current smoker, you know, relative risk of death due to all causes of, uh, for male and female for, um, uh, uh, these, these are current smokers and these lines are for former smokers, depending on when, when you quit, you're, you're a current smoker and this person quit at 50 and that, how that person's risk, um, you know, goes down over time. Uh, and this, um, uh, you know, this was derived uh, using, um, by using data from, um, you know, a survey, uh, the Cancer Prevention Study 2. Uh, so we created this model to inform the other model uh, that I presented you. So um, it is good idea, it's a good idea when you are modeling, you have to have a overall concept of what is that uh, your model, modeling, right? So in general, even though we have a lot of boxes in, in, inside here, uh, we are keep we are trying to keep, uh, keep up of the smoking prevalence and the smoking prevalence by each uh, compartment by each age group and uh, and uh, and smoking status and sometimes uh, gender um, if, if we incorporate that and uh, you know th that prevalence is uh, the let's say is the volume in this tank. Uh, and uh, this, this volume in this tank is uh, uh, regulated by initiation and cessation rates. And, and this, this is outflow cessation rate plus death. So we can control, we can, we can influence this part here. We can influence, uh, you know, open the, uh, the, the box, uh, the, the, you know, the exit wider for, for uh, exit. Uh, but, you know, we cannot magically influence the smoking prevalence. That's part of the dynamic. So, so we need to understand what is that the model is telling us. So uh, I can, I know how can I influence this too. What I don't know without the model is how this prevalence is going to grow over time. Because this, you know, um, what, whatever we do now is going to affect that uh, prevalence in the future. So, and uh, there's in, 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 um, uh, a, a time component uh, to, uh, you know, to realize what uh, is that you are doing and any, uh, what, what is the, what the consequence at any given time. So um, I wanted to, you know, include so uh, basic uh, uh, equations that define the, uh, the the model so here p is the population of a a uh, time t and uh, um, you know it's uh, it's simply the the uh, the population at h a minus one uh, uh, time t minus one times the number of people who didn't die uh, of the specific category so uh, we're i i we could include uh, net migration and so on, but uh, uh, we decided not to. Uh, so uh, we have, for example, the birth cohort uh, uh, rate or the, uh, at, uh, um, at, at the specific time, this is the population of age zero. And uh, for example, this is the transitions of the compartments um, of, of current smokers. So how the current smokers use progress uh, from um, uh, current, uh, you know, current smokers of one age to current smokers to another age. And uh, simply say that the current smokers uh, uh, last year 
that the current smoker last year that uh, that we're a, a a year younger than now um, is going to be oh, the, the current smokers uh, at certain age and uh, certain time uh, are uh, the number of, you can find them the the current smoker uh, that were a year younger last year uh, times uh, the 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 people so multiply that uh, the, uh, the these give you the number of people who, who didn't quit and then these are the people who didn't die with a specific death, death rate right one minus this the mortality rate my one minus the cessation rate so um uh, again, you know, you have to, um, you know, for every age to, if you know a little bit about uh, computer programming, this is just a simple loop that goes uh, through all uh, different ages. And we also go through the former smokers and the transition from former uh, current smoker to former smokers and so on. And uh, so, um, how do we, you know, start initialize this model? So sometimes we we need parameters, right, to uh, populate this model. Um, we surveys will allow us to know uh, the initial state of a model, how many people in each boxes initially, and then we can uh, use data to uh, estimate the the loss of motion. So if it is purely a Markov. Uh, uh, change kind of uh, um, a Markov model that only depends on the state, uh, then we, we uh, uh, use data to um, estimate or to uh, the, uh, the, those, those rates, right? And, you know, we assume that those rates will remain, um, you know, constant uh, um, in some cases. And, and then we look at the transition with the model. So, uh, this is uh, using NHIS uh, smoking prevalence data. Uh, what um, you know, we did, uh, we compare uh, the, the, the results of the model with the data, and then we minimize uh, the you know, weighted uh, least squares uh, and uh, to get an uh, estimation of cessation rate. So we know how to, um, you know, by pretty much observe from from the from the data uh, from the surveys we can uh, infer the initiation rate but cessation rate net of relapses is a little bit more um, you know uh, difficult so we decided to uh, do that uh, from the uh, using the model to do the, the estimation per se and uh, you know this is this is the data um, uh, and the, the um, uh, continuous line is the feet of the model. And, uh, you know, we took at different, different ages uh, and then we just, what do you do? You, you know, you make projections uh, and given different conditions, if, if uh, uh, you alter, uh, let's say initiation rate by different uh, amounts, this is how the prevalence is going to, uh, progress and okay, so we we've done a lot of uh, using this model in um, try to answer different questions in, in the literature, um, going from you know what happened we don't do anything uh, to uh, doing a multi product analysis with uh, um, mental uh, cigarettes and so I'm not going to go to each one of them but this is for example. Um, a modification of the other mental that you saw uh, to, in, to, um, to keep track, not just of the uh, smokers, but also the uh, subclassification of mental smoker and non-mental smokers, right? And, and inside that, then you know, we get age uh, specific, and then we get uh, um, the, um, uh, you know, gender specific if you, if you um, because we have the, the relative risk uh, for male and female uh, if we need to. So there's is this, these boxes here are not trivial. There's a lot of clear compartments that keep track, that we keep track uh, on them. And uh, uh, 
you know, that that's uh, th this is actually a, um, what I wanted to what I wanted to emphasize in this point is if you need to keep track of more things, then you use you you open more compartments and keep track of more um, you know uh, uh, additional um, uh, issues that you want to keep track of, right? And uh, uh, there is going to be is going to come to a point that uh, you are using so many compartments, you're trying to keep track of so many different things that is uh, easier just to um, uh, switch to another kind of model that are called individual based models, uh, uh, either micro simulation models or or um, agent based models that uh, focus on each individual and their interaction. So you don't have to you know, make a lot of boxes. The boxes are easy to understand and manage. And sometimes we have some equations, uh, some transitions uh, for, from which we can do some analytical derivations, uh, but sometimes they get to um, uh, bog down. So the, the limitation of compartment models where you cannot fully represent the heterogeneity of the individual. So you assume that people in, in even the tiny, in the tiny boxes uh, that the lowest level of classification are homogeneous, right? And, uh, uh, and if, if you want more heterogeneity, you just create more boxes inside and you know, until you get a box of one for each individual, which is just an individual based model. Um, and so this this is the issue of uh, compartmental models, if you care. Uh, so um, there in, in, there are a lot of things that we don't keep tracking in uh, compartmental models because we don't have the the space to to actually create more states uh, that and, and and maybe they are not uh, as important to figure out what is that we need to keep um, keep track of. And sometimes you don't know if they are important. Um, another thing that is uh, interesting is that the, the complementary models uh, cannot represent, uh, you know, accurately, um, you know, non-random connections and in interactions among individuals. So uh, Johnny has a friend in high school and that, that friend uh, knows uh, so many people who smoke and introduced Johnny to those people and even though uh, you know, uh, Johnny doesn't uh, follow his friends, but he might be influenced for by another uh, other type of individuals. And so there are some situations uh, in which people connect, and you know, uh, ran, uh, not randomly, uh, but uh, using some a structure we call social network, uh, and and influence each other. And the compartmental model, you know, don't don't track that. Uh, so that's another advantage of um, agent-based models, for example. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the you know modelers uh, should recognize when heterogeneity and network effects are important to merit abandoning the aggregate uh, approach in favor of an individual-based model. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much.